Loktar friends, hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, everyone's favorite orc, and we're doing a little bit of orc mode training. Uh, a couple of notes before we get into it. Uh, number one, squatting was tough today. I had three really good squat workouts this week and two bad squat workouts. Um, and if you guys are noticing the trend, you notice when I do the heavy deadlifts with the straps. On days I do volume back off squats. <laughs> uh, I can't squat hardly the next day. Uh, it's to be expected. And, you know, some people are like, oh, you're trying to do too much at once. No, guys, it's fine. I'll adapt. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I can have days like today where I can only squat 425, even though multiple other days I hit 485 and then do back off work with 405 for triples, uh, that's fine because I'm still getting the upper threshold muscle fibers. I'm still, as far as my body's concerned, that's an RPE 9.5 rep. Uh, it's still going to adapt to it. I'm still getting training stimulus. Yes, I'm under recovered. Yes, my nervous system is not recovering from the frequency of deadlifting I'm doing with the squats and the new back off work added in and everything else, and that's fine. You adapt eventually. You just keep getting more sleep, get quality nutrition, de stress, hot baths, massages, whatever it takes, and you know, muscle through it. It's fine. The thing is, I'm not getting any connective tissue pain. You know, some people will be like, Do you need a deload? No, guys, you deload when you're getting connective tissue pain or extreme loss of strength. What we mean by extreme loss of strength, true overtraining, you usually see a 25% cut on your maxes. A 400 pound turns into a 300 pound. Uh, but losing 60 pounds off when you're doing every day, especially then when you can come back the next day and hit the max again, no, that's not, we're not, we're not overtraining. We're on the bleeding edge of overreaching. But that's okay. It's all good, baby, because it's only on one exercise. Yeah, it's a critical one. But not the end of the world. Uh, the thing is, suck it up. Keep pushing through. And again, if I saw signs of injuries, it would be different. If I was getting inflamed connective tissue, be different. But yeah, this 425 was tough today. But yesterday was the one of the heaviest workload days I've had in a long time. It's the heaviest deadlift I've tried to grab this year. And I just only recently started deadlifting again, and I'm deadlifting six days a week. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be under-recovered. I got the equivalent of my best work set and back off set as far as my squat that day, and then I hit the heaviest deadlift I've hit this year. Yeah, I'm a little undercovered today. But you know what? It only affected the squat. My benching was great. Now, also, uh, side note again, before we get over to the benching, I did power cleans <laughs> today on camera. I figured, you know, I need to start doing them on camera. I played with them just a little bit this week, and I need to start learning to power clean. I need to start filming myself. I really need to get the lift down. Uh, the Olympic lifters, you may want to cut out after about the eight and a half minute mark because you're going to cry. You're going to cry. You're going to say those are quite possibly the worst cleans you've ever seen in your life. Uh, you know, and if you've been having a bad week and you're a serious Olympic lifter, it might want to make you kill yourself or something. You know, don't don't watch it, dude. Don't watch it if you can't handle it. It's bad. So now that that's out of the way, <laughs> let's get on with the other, other chats. So you'd be like, those are muscle cleans, bro. What the hell? <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. Uh, I am not coordinated. I'm a big old uncoordinated hippopotamus with Meniere's disease. So I already have some equilibrium issues. Uh, you know, the complex movement like power clean. It's probably not going to be beautiful. So you guys have been warned. Uh, there's going to be a lot of work for me to do on those. But I feel like they're really beneficial to training. And the beauty of it is for other strength athletes who are non-weight lifters, that meaning Olympic lifters, for people who don't know what weightlifting means. Uh, you don't have to have a perfect clean or snatch in order to get benefits to carry over to other sports and general athleticism. It's not necessary. Just a regular old power clean, a power snatch. You don't need full cleans. You don't need full snatches to get benefit. Now, if you want to lift maximum weights in a competitive environment, that'll be different. But if you don't compete in weightlifting, you don't have to lift maximum weight. You're still getting an amazing training response from it. They're fantastic lifts. Um, at 320 today, I had to unrack the bar further than I planned. I lost a little energy. It was a little hair slow at the lockout. Not bad. We'll go up next week. I'm going to start microloading this up. The back off work. <laughs> Explosive. Uh... Another thing, when guys are talking to me about pause benching, I'll have guys ask on occasion, do you just hold tension and barely touch the chest or do you let it sink? You sink it into your chest. You sink it, bring it to a dead stop, 
count at least one 1,000, and then you press it up with a force of a 1,000 suns. You press with everything that you have. Pause, explode. Pause, explode. So you sink it into your chest. You're still maintaining tension, but you let it sink. If you want to get an explosive bench press, if you want an explosive bench press, uh, you got to learn to just sink it into your chest and just explode. Uh, you know, don't worry about, am I holding continual tension? You're, you've got tension on it, trust me. You've got 280, 300, 350 pounds, whatever you've got on the bar. When you're sinking into your chest, you can't release the tension. It can't be done. Don't worry about it. It's not going to happen. It, with really lightweight, sure. When it starts getting up there a bit, uh, you have to because it's going to be sitting on your sternum. Uh, you, you maintain tension, trust me. You just dr sink it into your chest, you pause it, and then you drive it up hard. Push yourself away from the bar. You push your back into the bench. You explode it, and that's how you get an explosive and strong on the bench. And so, yeah, that's, I'm going to increase the weight on those next week. I'm going to increase the weight on the single next week. We're just going to microload it up. Then I did some muscle crushers. And again, not aptly named because we're using shoulder extension. And again, that's the key to keeping these from causing inflammation in your connective tissue. You make them not an isolation movement anymore. You move two joints. You need to move the shoulder joint and the elbow. Take that tension off there, get the long head more involved at the bottom, get a good stretch reflex. You'll build thicker triceps. You want to look like an orc or not. You've got to have meaty ass triceps to be an orc. You also need meaty ass triceps to have a powerful bench press and a powerful overhead press. So it's all about that. Yeah, I just do one set. You know why? Because I do them every day after my back off sets on benching. How much do you really need just to finish your triceps off? You know, I'm doing 15 sets of bench every week. You know what? Five sets of those a week will be fine. Just getting a little extra training response in the triceps. Today, hook grip. So no straps today. All hook grip. Working that hook grip. It went better. Uh, I ended up doing two reps with my 485. I separated them and rechalked. Um, the first one, I wasn't happy with it. I, I felt a little dicey with it on my thumb. So I didn't hold it very long at the top. I just locked it and then brought it back down. So I decided I needed to get at least a second rep in. And you know what? My skin isn't, isn't having a problem. Like there's no tears. There's no sign that it's going to tear. That's really, really good. So I'm glad I did a second rep today just to get that extra training response because I need that. So three days a week, I'm going to pull relatively heavy with this hook grip. And then I'll pull the straps the other three for, for a bigger training response because I'm not strong enough on the hook grip yet to really hold weights I'm capable of deadlifting. Uh, and people say, how long is that going to take? It's going to take months. I mean, I'm going to be realistic. People always want these quick fixes for everything. They want everything right now. You got to learn to enjoy the journey and you need to have a systematic approach. There's things that you might say, okay, I want this goal and you think you're going to reach it in three months or something silly. It might be a two-year goal. It might be a three-year goal. You better have a plan in place on how to reach that goal and an idea of how you're going to adjust. See, I just brought it down really quick on that one. And the next one, though, I tried to, I held it just a little longer because it felt nice and, and steady. I got chalked up really good again. Got those thumbs chalked up. And the top of the thumb, too. That's the other thing, too, I've noticed. If I forget to chalk up kind of the thumbnail, um, sometimes my finger slips off easier. But if I get chalk on that thumbnail also, the liquid chalk, it really gives me a good spot to, to grip my fingertips over because I don't have long fingers guys I've got stumpy fingers and thumbs so the chalk gets real important on the thumb uh, for my hook grip now guys I did some power cleans and I just ramped up to a heavy single enjoy the show uh, if you've never seen a hippopotamus fly if you guys see some of the thumbnails or slow it down you'll see I do actually catch air on quite a few of these you know my toes actually break the ground I've got steel shots I put one up on the Facebook because some people are like really it happens fat you don't see it very because it's pretty quick but yes my toes on some of these are clearing the ground like this one here I got a screenshot of it up on the fan page my front toes are coming three inches off the floor so you've seen a hippo fly now uh, but um, it needs some work as you guys notice I'm definitely flexible enough to rack I front squat that way a lot of people weren't aware of that when I was front squatting right before, early on in the Bulgarian before I was filming. When I front squat, I, I front squat with a full grip. Uh, I have no trouble at this point getting my thumb around the bar and holding it in a front squat. But some of these, is, I've got to work on that catch, and i got to get better at squatting at the top. Um, these are definite problems for me. It's not natural for me to squat into the top of it, a front squat. And I know it's bad. I know it's making it pretty much a muscle clean. Uh, so I'm going to work on it. But here's my last one with 225. 
you know, like I said, I get it up there, but if you guys notice, I, it, I have to re-remember to bring those elbows up at the rack. That's something I've got to work on. I'm going to have to start practicing, maybe doing, playing around with a little squatting and see if that helps uh, afterwards so that I get into the habit of it. All right, I'll let you guys see that silliness one more time. Avert your eyes, Olympic lifters. So I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.